Good evening, I'm Peggy Scott Laborde and welcome to Steppin' Out, spotlighting the New Orleans area's arts and entertainment scene. And seated at our table tonight, Ian McNulty, restaurant writer for the New Orleans Advocate. Good to see you. Hey, Hello, Peggy, and we look forward to seeing Poppy soon too. Absolutely. Sally Ann Roberts and Eric Paulson. Hello. Hello. Host of the morning show. Uh, just in case you think you have the wrong channel here. <laughs> uh, on oh, the right so, channel. W, that's right. On WWL TV to talk about their brand new book. Very good. Good to see you all. Hello. Thank you. Great to be here. And theater critic Alan Smason, editor of the online Crescent City Jewish News. And on the other side of the studio, Benny Grunch and the Bunch. Hello, Benny Grunch and the Bunch here to play <laughs> some Christmas tunes. And we look forward to that from their brand new CD. Hey, Benny Grunch. All right. But now we will be looking forward to Ian to tell us the scoop. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, of course, are... Uh, Oh, yes. You know, we have food. We have, we have yeah, something we have very some special for you. Right. Yeah. It's not a surprise. You know about yeah. this. Okay. <laughs> but I almost didn't. Okay. We have some special food-related music from our house band tonight. Benny, take it away. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, see, that's, that's the introduction I've been waiting for all my life, Peggy. I, I didn't want to miss yeah, out on this time. Give it to yeah, you. I didn't okay. want to miss out on this time. So, of course, I'm covering uh, New Orleans dining and restaurants uh -huh. every week in the New Orleans Advocate. And, of course, uh -huh. on Wednesdays, we put together this section, which is sort of like our sports page for New Orleans foodies, talking about dining, what's new, what's going on all over town. And uh, for this week, what we did was something kind of themed to this weekend in particular. We just had Thanksgiving. Everyone is stuffed with turkey. The fridge is filled with leftovers, but still, still, this is a big week for dining out. Restaurant tours around town will tell you that uh, all weekend long they see big groups coming out, uh, dining in their restaurants, and it's really no surprise. You know, it's you've got people in from out of town. Uh, you need to air out your house guests a little bit. <laughs> you just need a meal where you don't have to bring a side dish or clean up. Uh, it, it's, you know, eventually, even though it's a home-based holiday, everyone wants to go out. But there are some certain considerations when you're picking a restaurant, this weekend in particular. Um, Bayou Classic, of course, is in town. Mm -hmm. That causes some road closures downtown. Um, the shopping malls, of course, are a buzz. It's almost like a no-fly zone for some motorists around those areas. <laughs> and then, of course, the company you have, all your, your people in from out of town or your, your kids may be back from college some people just can't face another rue other people traveled all this way to be back in New Orleans they don't want a salad thank you very much so you have to pick a spot that can kind of cater to the whole spectrum right uh, and you want something that's kind of New Orleans but kind of lighter so I'm calling out four restaurants that I think belong to sort of a newer category of the updated New Orleans neighborhood restaurant we all know what the New Orleans neighborhood restaurant is but these are a little more modern updated approaches to it and first we're going out to Old Metairie for Cafe D. This is uh, Ralph Brennan's uh, restaurant uh, out there, right on Metairie Road. And the chef there, Chris Montero of Mid City, oh, yes. uh, does a terrific job uh, with Creole flavors, but lightening them up as well. Uh, lots of seafood. They go through lots of seafood <laughs> over this weekend <laughs> because A, it's not turkey, and B, Everyone loves seafood, so a good light touch there. And also, Cafe B is sort of the the, uh, the place where a classic uh, Ralph Brennan dish survived, the lobster ravioli. A lot of people will remember mm. from Baco uh, made the jump over to Cafe B after Baco closed. So uh, that's a just a, a dish lots of people will remember that's fantastic to get there. Uh, over in Mid-City, Katie's Restaurant. Now, a lot of people remember Katie's from, well, from forever. It's been around since the 80s there on the, you know, side street in Mid-City. Um, so this isn't a new restaurant, but really, it kind of feels like one. After Katrina, they redid it inside very thoroughly, and they redid the menu. So now, in addition to all the normal stuff, the gumbo, the po' boys, they have these pizzas that are real specialty there. Pulled pork, lots of seafood, lighter stuff too, salads and grilled seafood dishes. So a good place to check out. And it feels like an old New Orleans restaurant, even though the menu has been updated quite a bit. Uh, next in Lakeview is Mondo. And lots of people know Susan Spicer, a renowned chef uh, who earned uh, most of her, her fame through uh, Bayona down in the French Quarter, her flagship. Um, this is her newer restaurant in Lakeview, and it's very much a family-friendly neighborhood restaurant. But again, 
uh, it takes a lighter approach and it takes a more global approach. Lots of international type of flavors there. So if somebody's coming and they have to have that sweet potato andouille soup that reminds them of home, they can, but they can also have food from Latin America or Asia. Uh, very broad palette there. And then finally, uh, Ferret Street, uh, oh, a yeah. booming uh, restaurant <laughs> row there. Don't let anything you've heard about uh, traffic. Smiling. Uh, yeah, don't let anything you've heard about street repairs or street work going on there dissuade you from going over to Fred Street, especially if you're uh, visiting from in and out of town or back, back home uh, for Thanksgiving weekend. If you haven't been to Fred Street in a couple of years, you're not going to recognize it. I mean, this is not the Fret Street of just yeah. two or three years ago. And uh, Hi Hat Cafe is one of my favorites there. It's a sort of a diner merged with a deep south flavor with good Creole flavor as well. So it's a casual place, but they do their dishes really nicely. That's the shrimp remoulade, a fantastic rendition. Deviled eggs there, a great bar. You can pull together tables, and if you call in advance, they'll make a reservation for a larger group uh, and do uh, you know combined uh, uh, appetizer platters of some of their specialties. Really good to share around. So, if you just can't stand to be in that house anymore and look <laughs> at the stuffing and consider making another turkey sandwich, um, lots of places to check out. Those are some to kind of get you in the mood of what you should be looking All for. All right, and thank you so much. Oh, and pleasure. as we said, Poppy will be back with us soon. But she asked me, this is a PS to Ian segment <laughs> here, to let everybody know about. About, once again, about Hanukkah at Dominica. And here Ooh, are some photos mm -hmm. of their house baked bread and potato lockies, which will be on their special Hanukkah menu available through December the 5th. You can call 648 6020 or visit Dominica's website and you can see that for more information. Be glad to, to, to let you know about that. And now, though, before we go to Sally Ann and Eric, a little bit of inspirational music. Benny Grunch. Just a closer walk with thee. <laughs> Perfect to set up here. Awesome. And Sally Ann, let us begin with you. The name of your book is Your Power is On, A Little Book of Hope. And it's a, it's a big book of hope. There's a lot of wonderful uh, excerpts from the Bible. Tell us how you were inspired to do this. Uh -huh. Well, we all need power. And I was influenced a great deal by my grandmother Sally and my mother Lucy Marion, who practiced something called quiet time. And that's a time of prayer and meditation. And I had this this uh, meditation that I wanted to put together in this book of a little book of hope because I think we all need sometimes we just need to pick me up we just need to uh, take our eyes off of the situation and take a broader look and I saw Eric's pictures one and day Eric, he showed you may, me his in case pictures. You don't know, Mr. Eric mm. Paulson is also a photographer in addition to being Excellent a, a talented show host and so we have some photos that we're including in that too now how did you all decide which photo went with which Biblical quote. How well, that, that was really our I'm collaboration, and it photos. wasn't just the yeah. biblical quotes. It uh -huh. was uh, some of Sally's thoughts, and, and Sally mm -hmm. has thoughts, and then a biblical quote that goes with it. And she wanted all nature shots, or primarily nature shots, and, and that's what we looked for the most. And mm -hmm. I tell you what, if all, if you need a pick me up, all you have to do is go to the lakefront and just <laughs> sit out there and just take it all in, or just go down uh, St. Charles Avenue, look at the oak trees, or uh, just go to your backyard, or sit on your front stoop. When you go out and you look at this magnificent magnificent creation that we are a part of, you realize that, you know, there is something broader, there is a power source that can help us through any situation. And you know, uh, on, on the show, and we're showing shots here, mm -hmm. uh, this is one of the Paris Island I City love Park. this picture. And uh, you know, you can hardly take a bad picture in New Orleans. <laughs> <I'm telling laughs> That's <you> very <laughs> true. <laughs> it really is true. Uh, uh -huh. but, but when Sally came to me and I said, Sally, you want me to help you with a book on inspiration? <laughs> me? Oh, look at this oh, look bridge at over a lagoon in City Park. I mean, just so many pictures. It's Eric's perspective. It's how, you know, you can go out and, and you can look at a, a scene, but when he takes his lens, oh my goodness, yeah, Asheville, North is. Carolina. I've been to Asheville a couple of times and Asheville is a beautiful city. Um, I went there for a juice retreat and I visited the Cove for a retreat as well. And I tell you what, that, where did you take that picture, Eric? At my brother-in-law's wedding. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, wow. my, my, my wife's brother was getting married and uh, we, it was an outdoor wedding, and it, the weather couldn't have been more perfect. Mm -hmm. The next day, it, it got cold and torrential rain, but they just lucked out. Eric, have you been shooting for a long time? Oh, since I was in college. Really? Yeah, mm -hmm. I started out with film, and now it, it, with, with digital, it's just changed everything. Mm -hmm. But this is over at City Park again, mm -hmm. and as I said, you can hardly take a bad picture 
in, in New Orleans. That's true. Uh, mm -hmm. and, oh, I love that. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. that is really, mm -hmm. it's, it's similar to the cover, too. It's yeah. so, and that kind of reminds me, yeah. of, I used to be a big sailor on Lake Pontchartrain, and you'd see, you'd see a, a sunset over Lake Pontchartrain, and there was nothing better than being out on the water, um, maybe sometimes with a glass of wine or something, and just watching the sun go over, go, go down on Lake Pontchartrain. It was just it's a gorgeous sight. Yes. Now, um, of course, you all have a special event this weekend. Um, yes. And, and Actually, Hoba, next huh? week. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is it yeah, this weekend? It's, this yes. weekend. Yeah, this weekend. Oh, it's December the 1st. December the 1st. <laughs> okay. It's also this weekend. Yeah. You know, I, I've, you got got my, I've got my game so confused <laughs> because I'm, I'm thinking about when the Saints play. <laughs> and that's Monday Night Football. So you football. all will be giving a talk and signing books for that? Yeah. Actually, right. it's a dual book signing with, with a, a, a friend of ours, uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Chris Sinak. He has a, a wonderful book out. Mm -hmm. He's kind of a, like the historian of HOMA. This is his second book. This one's called uh, Livestock Brands and Marks, an interesting history of, uh, of Louisiana and, uh, and HOMA. Oh, wow. Now, Sally, uh, you know, I know you, you've always been a spiritual person, mm -hmm. and also you've had adversity in your life, oh, as, yes. as so many people have, between losing your husband and then mm -hmm. your sister, who seems to be doing much better. Thank you, Lord. Robin Roberts. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yes, indeed. You know, I've been through a lot of things, but as Robin said when she was going through uh, the chemotherapy and, and getting ready to receive my stem cells, which was, you know, people say, oh, to be a stem cell donor, it must be so painful. No, it's not. Um, it's the, the person who's the recipient recipient of the stem cells who has to go through it, mm -hmm. um, through awesome uh, chemotherapy. And she said, I am not going to complain because she says everybody's going through something. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so we just hope that people will be able to be inspired by Eric's pictures and a few inspirational words. And you know, it's something you can keep on your nightstand. Sometimes we, uh, in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. a thought will come to our mind and we'll all of a sudden get worried, pick up the book, and just and really, be inspired. And really, through all yeah. the adversity Sally has been in, and, and we've all mm -hmm. been through. Mm -hmm. It was it was her sister getting sick this time that really oh, wow. yeah. inspired this book. Yeah. Well, thank you all so very much for giving thank this you. to us. And oh, well, good. Good. I hope you enjoy it. And publishing too. And now, though, we're so glad you're here. But it's time to visit with Mr. Benny Grunch. And before they pre start performing, let me tell you that once again, the Twelve Yachts of Christmas, the 2013 uh, version, is, is happening, and they have a pretty busy weekend too, because on Saturday new starting at noon at Pontchartrain Vineyards, and that's, um, of course, on the North Shore. We're going to um, mention that he's going to be performing there. And then there's also Benny Grunch and the Bunch on Sunday. Here we go. There's it. Look at this. I love that, Benny. That's a great <laughs> cover. <laughs> Santa's working with the NSA. <laughs> yes, apparently so. Apparently so. But you've got the Holiday in the Vines uh, Festival. And as we said, that's on Saturday. And then on Sunday, you've got the at Bucktown Burgers and Fish. Sunday from 5 to 8, you'll be playing there. And BennyGrunch.com gives you all that great information. And so what are you going to play for us tonight, Benny? Down the road, Sandy Claus. Okay, let's hear it. Benny Grunch and the Bunch. Look up in the sky. Is that a helicopter? Is that a pelican? No, it's Sandy Claus.
Claus. Magazine to you for zine. Down the road, Santa Claus. Hey, Santa Claus, don't forget my house all the way down by the river. It takes six months to wrap them presents. He said it takes one year to do the malls and stores. When I was skinny, I could go down the chimney. Let's meet the bunch. The bunch? Yo, you want to know who these people yes, are? Yes, we do. <laughs> They're Carlo not anonymous. Carlo Nucio on drums. <laughs> All right. From Unincorporated Jefferson Parish. <laughs> okay. And Alpo, so, so, so. Alan Poche on guitar from Araby. All right, really thank you Araby. all. Now, we need a little theater music to introduce Mr. Theater Smason. Music. So can we hear a little theater music? Oh, well, I know. <laughs> Let's do it again. It's so good. Well, Woo! Alan, no show business like nobody we know. Thank ah. you. <laughs> what production values? Oh do my have? goodness, we've raised them so high <laughs> we today. Really have. <laughs> only Benny, only Benny Grunch could make that song into a Christmas song. Absolutely. <laughs> the Merm would be proud yes, of you, sir. Benny. Yes. Uh, one of the, uh, you know, kind of do a little recap before we get started. Um, and and somebody may say first off before I do that. Uh, what the heck is this? Well, this is the, the uh, kudu horn, if you will, or the shofar that I led the 200 or so Boy Scouts today on the Ten Commandments hike that I led. So I just wanted to bring that as a sort of a memento of the day's uh, activities. But uh, anyway, going back to theater, which is what we were talking about, we are talking a little bit about the Fringe Festival, uh, a little bit of a recap, because the Fringe Festival is now finished, but it has gone down to the record books as one of the most successful, if not the most successful, that they've ever had. There were so many events that sold out that I myself, could not get in. Oh, so I want boy. you to know that's okay. that's the uh, progress that they made yeah. in just five years. One of the first ones I wanted to talk a little bit about was one of these wonderful little shows that you see, a one-man show called Obscura. It was a magic show. And the fellow who's in it is Christian Kagago. Uh, he was just amazing. He had an overhead projector and it would project onto a screen and you would see the titles as he would put them underneath oh. and uh, he had playing card tricks that were just the most unbelievable he even pulled me out of the audience unbeknownst to me I was going to be part of the uh, show <laughs> uh, but it was really a great great uh, opportunity he also did something which is wonderful because of you know New Orleans with the Mardi Gras we had uh, doubloons that he had been collecting and he used the doubloons in a magic trick that I can't even go into but it was wonderful <laughs> so again uh, uh, hats off to Christian next up I wanted to mention one of the other shows that I was really impressed with they also always do a great job with Mudlark. Uh, this is the little puppet uh, place that they have, a little playhouse. They close the lights down and they bring in all the puppets, different projections and what have you. Last year, they did a story about an unsolved murder in New Orleans from back in the 1920s. This was actually the story called Blue Book. It was a guide <laughs> mm, to Storyville. The Blue and Book. all of those puppets actually uh, represent madams of the past mm. in the Storyville era. What and and of course, uh, oh yeah, it was wonderful. Uh, they, they did a little historical perspective. Now, one thing I did catch them on, they did mention one of the things that they said was something about poor boys. Of course, mm. poor boys, as we know, Ian, did not start until the 1920s, uh, right? And they didn't use that term, right? Well, some people still don't use that term. <laughs> <laughs> poor po boys? <laughs> I do, but we, you know, Peggy and I do I say poor, poor boys. boys. Yes. Okay. In, any awesome. event, in any event. <laughs> but uh, they did a great job on, on that as well. And, and you saw some of the people there. Then also, for the first time, every time they put this show on at the Elm Theater, I was unable to go, but The Adventures of Butt Boy and Tigger, which is a comedy. Okay. Now, again, it's a little bit of an adult Woo. comedy, but uh, it was done with, uh, with great uh, uh, taste, and uh, I have to say that uh, Chris Maroy and Garrett Prejean here did a wonderful job. I'm so glad I finally got to see it, and all part of what was going on with Fringe. Also, uh, uh, one of the other shows that we want to mention was at the last, they had a circus performer who used to be in Cirque uh, 
UCLA. Uh, her name is, uh, well, she's up there as well, the, the rendezvous. But she was pulling somebody else from the audience too, Matt Stanley. They were great together. And uh, again, he was a great uh, uh, straight man for, for her uh, comedy. But uh, again, uh, a little bit of, of, of uh, circus magic and a little bit of comic act. She's basically a circus clown, if you will, or com combine the elements of, of clowning and circus. And, and it was really wonderful. So again, hats off to, to Fringe. They did a, a wonderful job. And again, I want anybody who's going to be in the know to know that, that not only does the Bywater and Farberg uh, neighborhood come up alive after uh, Melaton Festival, but uh, they should make sure that they, uh, they uh, make plans to go next year. Okay, let's go to some of the theater that's coming up. Long Day's Journey in Tonight. This is a Pulitzer mm -hmm. Prize winner by Eugene O'Neill. And again, those of you who uh, might uh, know a little bit about it, it's sort of an autobiographical play. It was not published until after his death. Uh, it's going to be starring uh, Mary Pauly and Michael Martin as Mary and James Tyrone, with Todd Moore and Glenn Oquin as their sons. It basically takes place over a, a single day. It deals with dysfunctional uh, family, uh, deals with uh, jealousy, it deals with resentment, all kinds of things that are working in there. And was considered one of uh, Eugene O'Neill's uh, premier pieces. Uh, again, it won the Pulitzer Prize. It's going to be uh, directed by Stephen Eckert. And again, uh, at the Art Club at Michaelopolis. And Peggy, you know that's the place where they're going to do Night of the Iguana during the Tennessee Williams Festival. Yes, so we indeed. wanted to mention that. Also coming up will be Death Trap. This is the Ira uh, Levine uh, show that uh, uh, is, is the little five character play that they do. It's directed by Frederick Mead. You're going to have James Howard Wright as the Broadway playwright Sidney Brule, uh, Margot Fanning as his wife Myra, uh, Adam Stevenson as Clifford Anderson, an aspiring young playwright, Doug Barden as a shrewd attorney, Porter Milgram, and Rebecca Myers as the Dutch psychic Helga Tendorp. So it should be really fun. And uh, again, this is going to be directed by Frederick Mead, who you may recall did Am Butterfly not too long ago. It's a five character thriller, ingeniously constructed, going to be taking place at the Shadowbox Theater. Also, uh, ma mentioning uh, things coming up, we, we wanted to talk about uh, what's happening in the world of Christmas. We have uh, <laughs> lots of things happening. First off, A Tuna Christmas is running through December the 8th. That's the Jefferson Parish uh, uh, Performing Arts Society. They, they have this uh, on the West Bank in Teatro Wigo. Uh, this is going to be a two-man show where they play multiple roles. That's a very funny show. It is extremely funny. If you get a chance to go over there and check it out, uh, information there on where to go. Uh, a Tuna Christmas will also be playing in the North North Shore area uh, in Slidell. So check out that as well if you're on the North Shore. They will be coming to you on the weekend of the 14th and the 15th. And also coming up for Christmas will be a repeat <laughs> of Geraldine uh, McGunkel's Double Wide Christmas. <laughs> this will be at the Mid City Theater. And uh, again, that's starting up uh, December the 6th. That'll be next week starting up. And want to mention that uh, the tickets are only $20. And last but not least, the amazing true story of Santa Claus. This has been put on as an act of love by Butch Care. Uh, he plays uh, the old elf himself. And again, this is his 10th anniversary of putting wow. it on. So, you know, oh, for 10 wow. years he's been doing this. Again, this will be at the Rivertown Theaters for the Performing Arts. And, and again, uh, what a way to celebrate Christmas yes, with the kids. thank you, Alan. And now it is time for our artist spotlight. Tonight we are featuring two timeless photographs. The first is titled Charles Hotel, as in the St. Charles Hotel, New Orleans circa 1867 by renowned 19th century New Orleans photographer Theodore Lilenthal. The second is titled Louisiana 1947, it's printed circa 1975 by Henri Cartier-Bresson. Both are part of the exhibit Photography at Noma, selections from the permanent collection of the New Orleans Museum of Art on view through January 19th at Noma, that's right there of course in City Park. And you can call there for more information or go to their website at noma.org for more information. And a reminder that you can check out Stepanout's online calendar at wyes.org including New Orleans Pride and Pride Cares Miss and Ms. AIDS Awareness Pageant. That's coming up and their Winter Wonderland event too and that's next Friday night. So check out our uh, online calendar. New Orleans Magazine's Quiz Queen Julia Street has a question for us. Last time ZZ Ryan gave us the name of the all-male group that participated in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade two years ago and the origin of their name. 610 Stompers and they're named after a section in the Superdome. Now, the no, no. <laughs> now tonight's question in the Benny Grunch song, you see, Benny, you're even more famous than you realize. <laughs> the 12 Yachts of Christmas, what does the true love give on the second and third days? Oh, Woo! Send <laughs> your answer. Hands are going.
pulling up here. Mm -hmm. Send your answers to stephanout at wyes.org. Our prizes, a Louisiana Life magazine subscription, a gift certificate for Vianne's, that's Vianne's Tea House and Salon, offering their culinary and gourmet tea experience for two. Benny Grunch's latest CD. Yay, Benny, the 12 Yachts of Christmas 2013. Tonight we also have an apron worn by WYS production associate Kelsey Schreiber. The message, soy to the world. From our friends at wearablevegetables.com. Now our picks, Ian. Well, Peggy, we've been seeing fine food turn up all over the place, but this is a new one on me. A bowling alley. There's a new bowling alley just opened up uh, down oh, on wow. Fulton Place. Yeah, it's yeah. called Fulton Alley. It's right there by Harris. Wow. And the chef there, Mike Nuremberg, he's doing small plates. It's not really a restaurant, but you can go hang out, do some bowling, have a drink, and eat some really good, uh, good. share some really good plates. Sally Ann. I just want to tell people, if you are an actor between the ages of 12 and 90, they are looking for actors for the uh, Anthony Bean Theater, and you can um, call 862-PLAY, and uh, let, they'll give you more information okay, about Eric. that. And if you cannot make it down to the Terrible and Parish Library for our book <laughs> signing this Sunday, on me and on uh, on uh, Library Drive in Homa, mm -hmm. you can go to our website, yourpowerison.com, and okay. get a copy of the book. All right, thank you, Alan. Before I go, my pick just want to make mention of the Crescent City Jewish News. They're doing an art show sponsored from One to Four Congregation Beth Israel, 4004 West Esplanade in Metairie. Also for the pick, a swing in Christmas. That's at the National World War II Stage Door Canteen with the victory bells. Should be great. And check out the details. All right, and my picks: the Arts Market of New Orleans will be open for two days. That is a Palmer Park for their special holiday shopping weekend. That's Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Palmer Park, as we said. Please visit arcscouncilofneworleans.org for more information. WYES's own Errol Laborde will be signing his brand new book on Mardi Gras next Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. with a discussion and holiday dinner at Maple Street Bookshop. And visit their website for more information on that. That'll be a whole lot of fun. And looking forward, WYES will have two one-hour day Downton Abbey preview screenings. The first will take place Monday, December 9th from 6 to 9 p.m. at the Treen Tech Center that's in Mandeville. And the second will be Wednesday, December the 11th from 6 to 9 p.m. at the Little Gem Saloon that's right there at South Rampart and Poitras. Both events are free, but you've got to call 840-4886. So you need to register. We need you to do that. So call them and check our website for more information. And now, though, let's hear from Betty. What are you going to play for us? We're going to play the red light cameras and potholes for Old Lang Syne. All right, thanks for watching. Good night. <laughs> Has all the maintenance been forgot on the cameras fighting crime? Instead Do it.